If you open your eyes and you have a visual experience <coughs> that you describe as a red apple, I guess I'll point here. <coughs> this is your experience inside the cloud. Um, most of us believe that, in fact, in reality, there is a red apple that would exist even if we weren't looking that has the shape and color that we see. And if you close your eyes and your conscious experience changes to a gray field, we still believe that there is a red apple out there that would exist even if no one perceived it. That's the standard view that we have. <clears throat> and this is not only the standard view of most casual observers, but it's also the, the view of most of my colleagues um, who are professional students and uh, researchers in the area of visual perception and perception more generally. Um, my PhD advisor, David Marr, said that usually our perceptual processing delivers a true description of what's there. So if I perceive a red apple, if I'm sober and no one's trying to fool me, then chances are there really is a red apple that would be there even if no one, if no living creature could, uh, could, could see it. And Marr went on to say that we compute explicit properties of the real visible surfaces out there. So there is a real world out there with, with three-dimensional shapes and surfaces, and your visual system in the normal case recovers those three-dimensional surfaces accurately. And we get more objective aspects of the visual world. So more and more, we're evolving to see the truth objectively about, about the world. Robert Trivers, who is one of the uh, foremost evolutionary theorists in social evolutionary theory, for the last 30 or 40 years, also has said that our sense organs have evolved to give us a detailed and accurate view of reality. So vision scientists, first-rate evolutionary biologists or evolutionary theorists say this. Uh, and th there's also um, another branch of perception that is, is called embodied cognition kinds of folks. And they also say um, there is an animal independent world and some of our perceptions and thoughts get it right. So again, it's, it's the consensus. And, and the textbooks say, evolutionarily speaking, vision is useful precisely because it's so accurate. So the idea is this. Those of our ancestors who saw more accurately had a competitive advantage compared to those who saw less accurately. And so they were more likely to pass on their genes that code for the more accurate perceptions. So after thousands of generations of this competition, we can be quite confident that we're the offspring of those who saw more accurately. And so in the normal case, we perceive the world quite accurately. And that seems like just obvious, right? Surely it, it's more fit to see the truth than not to see the truth. And so most of my colleagues think that perception is a process of reconstruction. So that the reason we see reality as it is is because our visual system is really has been shaped by evolution to reconstruct the truth about the world. I'll give you just a couple examples, though, that, that will start to make you wonder. So in this hat, <clears throat> I have a brown rectangle and a yellow one. Are they the same color or different? Well, they're in fact exactly the same RGB values. So I, I did this in, in Photoshop. Um, uh, this has exactly the same RGB values as, as that, and yet we see one is yellow and one is brown. So what's going on here is that the visual system is not just seeing like a camera taking a snapshot. We're actually constructing the colors that we see. And this is, by the way, a uh, standard view in the field. So I'm not saying anything that's unusual at this point. Um, this one is something that you can check out for yourself. The top probably looks dark gray. This looks sort of white or light gray. Um, they're exactly the same shade of gray. And this one you can check for yourself that I'm not cheating. If you close one eye and put your finger up so that it covers this gap, you'll see that they're exactly the same. Does everybody get that? It looks exactly the same? So, and we didn't put anything in your coffee, so it's, you know, this, this, is, this is you. So your visual system isn't seeing the, the raw truth. It is a constructive process. But, but the idea for, for my field is that 
all of these constructions that we're doing of shapes and colors and so forth, we're doing it to try to get as accurate and, and a veridical perception of the world as possible. So vertical means a true perception of the world. And the idea is, as I said, that vertical perceptions are fitter. This is on the test? No, no. Um, so it turns out we don't have to wave our hands. The intuitive argument that I gave you from evolution is it, it seems compelling intuitively, but we don't have to wave our hands. Evolution by natural selection is now a mathematically precise theory. We have the tools of what's called evolutionary game theory, evolutionary graph theory, and, and genetic algorithms. So we can actually test. And, and about 10 years ago, I decided to test um, what, what I believed and what most of my colleagues believed. And the key notion in the equation, the, I, that's the replicator equation which governs natural selection. The key notion that we have to understand in it is something called fitness. And we've all heard about fitness, but, but what is fitness as an evolutionary concept? Um, to get at that, think about a T-bone steak and ask how many fitness points or what fitness um, benefits would that offer to, say, a hungry lion? Well, for a hungry lion, a lot of fitness benefits um, for a T-bone steak. But if that lion was full and it was looking to mate, then that T-bone steak offers no fitness points whatsoever, right? And for a rabbit in any state and for any action, that T-bone steak's not going to do it anything. So fitness <coughs> points, as they're used in evolutionary theory, depend on the world, whatever the world might be, but they also depend very heavily on the organism, lion versus rabbit versus human, its state, hungry versus full, and the action, feeding, fighting, fleeing, mating, all you know, the famous four Fs. So, so all of these, these fitness functions then do depend on the world, but critically on the organism at state and the action. So, it's a, so fitness functions are going to be these complicated things. This is a nice little fitness function that says, you know, for as the state of the world changes, how the fitness points are going to change. So for one more example, being 5,000 meters underwater is really bad for me but it's great for a benthic fish, right? What's perfect high fitness for one organism is bad for another. So th this is a technical question. Does natural selection actually favor true perceptions? Or have we been shaped to see reality as it is? And I'm not going to go into that theorem. I'll just st state the result. The result is the probability is zero that natural selection will favor an organism that sees reality as it is. We came at this with evolutionary game simulations, which we actually we created about a million different random worlds with resources in them. We put creatures that could see the whole world exhaustively and truly, and they competed against creatures that saw none of reality and were just tuned to the fitness payoffs. The creatures that saw reality as it is went extinct when they competed against those who didn't see reality as it is and were just tuned to fitness. So after I did that with my graduate students for a few years, I went with a mathematician and we proved a theorem. Uh, the, 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 the theorem is this. Um, evolution by natural selection um, will drive a creature to extinction that sees truth if it competes against another creature of equal complexity that sees none of the truth and is just tuned to the relative fitness payoffs. And the idea is something like this, intuitively. Suppose you're playing a video game. You're trying to grab points <coughs> quickly as you can to get to the next level of the game. If you don't get enough points, you, don't, you, you die, you don't go to the next level of the game. If you do anything except focus on getting those points, you're going to lose. And that's the same thing in evolution by natural selection. You don't go to the next level, your children go to the next level if you succeed. If evolution shaped our perceptions to do anything else except chase fitness payoffs, then you're playing the wrong game. It's very much like someone playing chess that's hunting for pawns instead of the king. It's the wrong game. Looking for truth is like hunting for pawns. You're not playing the right game. The only game is fitness payoffs. So, and fitness payoffs can be um, very, very interesting. If you have, say the case of oxygen. If you have too little oxygen, you die. If you have too much oxygen, you die. If you have just the right narrow amount of oxygen, you're fine. So suppose that you're an organism and you only have 
two perceptions, <coughs> red and green. And evolution is going to try to shape you with those two perceptions to deal with the oxygen problem, right? getting enough oxygen. Now, there's two strategies that you could think about here. One is a truth strategy. So I'm going to set up my red and green perceptions to tell me as much as possible about how much oxygen there really is in the world. So green would mean, in that case, lots of oxygen. Red would mean not as much oxygen. So from the, from the red and green perceptions, you would be able to say how much oxygen there was, as much as you could tell with just two colors. Right? That would be as maximally informative about the truth about how much oxygen there is. But here's, here's a different strategy. I'm going to use the same red and green colors, but I'm going to do it this way. Red means bad payoffs. Green means good payoffs. Same two colors, but a different mapping from the world into my perceptions. I can't tell you how much oxygen there is in the world. Red could mean a whole lot or very, very little. I've erased knowledge about the truth. All I know is that it's really safe where it's green, and it will kill me where it's red. So if I start seeing green, I'm good. If I see red, whatever, I don't care what the world is. If it's red, do something different. If it's green, keep doing what you're doing. Here, you have no idea if you're going to die or not. You're seeing the truth, and the truth will make you extinct. For more debates, talks, and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.